Jesus is coming again soon. Whenever we speak about the coming of Jesus, we remember his promise. He made it very clear that he will come. And our consideration this morning is based on John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Let us read these Bible verses. Gospel of John, chapter 14, 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive unto my, you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. When Jesus spoke these words, was just after he revealed to his disciples that he is going to depart from them. In the 13th chapter, we read in verse 33, John 13, 33. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you. Verse 36, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go? Thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. When Jesus revealed to the disciples that he was departing from them, made them very sorrowful. And they were troubled. And in chapter 14, Jesus wanted to appease them and comfort them. And started with these words, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, but believe also in me. And now he revealed where he was going. He said that he was going to prepare a place for his followers. And when the place will be ready, he will come and take them to be with him where he is. Whenever we hear about the coming of Jesus, immediately the thought comes to our mind. When will it be? When? The promise is made. But the skeptics, they ask the question, we have heard the story that Jesus is coming since we were children. Where is the promise? The fulfillment of the promise. Well, when such people appear, asking, where is the promise fulfilled? They themselves constitute a sign that, that we are living in the last days. Because Apostle Peter mentioned that in the last days, scoffers will come and say, where is the promise of his coming? <coughs> Perhaps not only the skeptics and unbelievers ask this question, where is the promise? When will it be fulfilled? Maybe some of those who believe in God and even believe in the coming of Christ, they will use the same expression if not 
in viva voice, they will express that in their actions. <coughs> they will say, since we were children, we heard about this message that Jesus is coming soon, and one day after the other is coming, and the world continues going on as always. And then they expect to have a bright future, thinking that they may dwell on this earth forever. And they forget the wonderful promise that Jesus made, I will come again. This promise that Jesus made, he was not the only one that made this promise. It was confirmed by angels. After the resurrection of Jesus, when he was giving the last instructions to the disciples on the Mount of Olives, as he was talking to them, the Bible says that the cloud received him and kept him out of their sight. And they continued looking up. And in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 11, we read the words of angels that appeared to the disciples, saying, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. <coughs> yes, the angels confirmed that Jesus will come the same way as they saw him going up into the heaven, he will come. This was a promise of Jesus confirmed by the angels. And the promise of God or promises of God will never fail. It never failed in the past. Ground to believe that this promise of Jesus will be also fulfilled very soon. The signs that Jesus foretold would indicate his coming, most of them were fulfilled. And all these indicate that the great and most glorious event in history will take place soon. How is the world? Is it bright? Is it worthwhile to continue living forever in this world as it is? Is not the world growing from bad to worse in every facet of life? The Lord said that such conditions as we witness today would exist just prior His coming. This uh, doctrine of the uh, coming of Jesus is the very key of the Holy Scriptures, both in the Old and New Testament time. So, we should believe in His promise, that His promise will be fulfilled. But now comes the question, why will He come? 
Why will he come? Well, he, Jesus, did not leave us in uncertainty. He told us why he will come. As we have read before, that where he is, we may be there also to be with him. And when Jesus offered his last priestly prayer to the Father, he said in John chapter 17, verse 24, Father, I pray that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Jesus prayed that those that are his followers should be granted the privilege to be with him. This is the prayer that he offered to his father. This is one of the reasons why he is coming. To take us to the place where he is. The Apostle Paul, writing to the Thessalonians in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7, he said, And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, he will come to give us rest in this restless world. Take us away from this restless world and give us rest. He assured to the Thessalonians that they will have happiness, peace, and a glorious condition when Jesus will come. In the book, Acts of Apostles 264, the spirit of prophecy explains the words of the apostle to the Thessalonians. It says, in his second letter, Paul sought to correct their misunderstanding of his teaching and to set before them his true position. You remember that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Thessalonians in his first epistles about the coming of Jesus, which we will read a little bit later. But they thought that in their days this will be fulfilled. And Paul explained that this will not take place before there will come the apostasy in his second chapter of the Second Thessalonians. The man of sin will appear. The son of perdition will present himself as if he would be God. And the coming of Jesus would not come before that apostasy would take place. And I read further the explanation of Paul. He says, he told them that he presented them to other churches as an example of the patient, persevering faith that bravely withstands persecution and tribulation, and he carried their minds forward to the time of the second coming of Christ, when the people of God shall rest from all their cares and perplexities. 
why will he come? That we may rest from our cares and our perplexities, from our sorrows, from our troubles, from diseases, and from death. This is why he is coming. Yes, he is preparing the mansions. The mansions are ready. But we are not ready to get there. How beautiful will it be? That place where Jesus is, where he wants to take us. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians, Chapter 2, verse 9, as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And the spirit of prophecy commands with these words the same thought in steps to Christ Page 86, let your imagination picture the home of the saved and remember that it will be more glorious than your brightest imagination can portray. Human mind is inadequate to describe how beautiful, how glorious will be that place where Jesus wants to take his, children, his uh, followers. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, we read, 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him. In what sense we shall be like him? We will be granted immortality. We will have eternal life. We will have the life that is measured with the life of God, which is eternal. And this eternal life is not an eternal life in suffering or in sorrow. In Isaiah chapter 35, verse 10, we read Isaiah 35, 5, verse 10. The ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The life that is promised us is a life of joy. Sorrow will flee away. It will exist no more. Since we have the promise and we do not know the time and we know the reason why he is coming, we have a duty and that is to make our preparation. Procrastinating is dangerous. 
postponing our preparation is dangerous because after the close of probation there will be no time for preparation. At that time there will be no more confession of sins and forgiveness of sins. There will be no intercessor on our behalf. No second chance will be given then for repentance and conversion. So today is the time of preparation. In manuscript releases, volume 17, page 2, I read this. God's people are to warn the world to prepare for the second appearing of the Lord. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is coming with power and great glory. When the cry of peace and safety is being sounded from every part of the Christian world, and the sleeping church and the world will be asking in scorn when is the promise of his coming. This is what Christians in general do, sleeping church will do. They will sound everywhere the cry, peace and safety. And they will ask, where is the promise of his coming? Since the beginning, things continue like it has been. In the book Heavenly Places, page 250, I read this. Now is the time to prepare for the coming of our Lord. Readiness to meet Him cannot be attained in a moment's time. Preparatory to that solemn scene, there must be vigilant waiting combined with earnest work. Notice two things mentioned here, that in the time of, time of preparation, we should wait and work. The union of these two make us complete in Christ. The active and devotional must be combined as were the human and divine in Christ. So God's children glorify Him. Amid the busy scenes of life, their voices will be heard speaking words of encouragement, hope, and faith. They, uh, they, uh, the will and the affections will be consecrated to Christ. Thus, they prepare to meet their Lord. And when He comes, they will say with joy, this is our God. We have waited for Him, and He will save us. One more statement from the same book, Heavenly Places, page 211. Prepare for the judgment that when Christ shall come to be admired in all them that believe, you may be among those who will meet him in peace. In that day, the redeemed will shine forth in the glory of the Father and the Son. The angels touching their golden harps will welcome the King and his trophies of victory, those who have been washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb. A song of triumph will peal forth, filling all heaven. 
Christ has conquered. He enters the heavenly courts accompanied by his redeemed ones, the witnesses that his mission of suffering and sacrifice has not been in vain. We should beware about or against procrastination. Let's not postpone our preparation for that time. How will Jesus come? In which manner? The angels said to the disciples the same way that he had gone to, he had gone to heaven in a cloud. He will come. There are many different interpretations about the manner of the coming of Jesus. Some believe that he will come personally to Palestine and there he will call all his children and establish an earthly kingdom in Palestine. Others believe that he had already come in 1914 in spirit, spiritually invisibly. Many believe in the rapture theory that people may be together and uh, one suddenly is taken, he disappears and he was raptured or taken to heaven. <coughs> there are many different theories about the manner of the coming of Jesus. But we want to know what is revealed in the Word of God. In what manner will He come? In Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, Jesus says through the Apostle, Behold, He cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see Him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. A few important thoughts from this Bible verse. He will come with clouds. We will talk about this cloud a little bit later when he comes in the cloud. He says also that every eye shall see him. Jesus mentioned that also in, Revel in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. Matthew 24, 30. He said, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. From these Bible verses, we understand that all nations, every living person on earth will see Jesus coming with their own eyes, physical eyes. Many people think, oh, they will see him only with their eyes of faith, eyes of discernment. However, Jesus mentioned that even those that pierced him will see him. Did they have eyes of faith or discernment? Those that pierced Jesus, yet they will see him coming. Where are they now? Those that pierced Jesus, they are in their graves. They are dead. But before the coming of Jesus, they will be resurrected. 
so that they may see Jesus coming. And this will take place in the beginning of the seventh and last plague. Of that resurrection, the prophet Daniel speaks that in the time of the great tribulation such as never was, many that are in the graves are raised, some to everlasting life, others to everlasting contempt. Those who are raised, among them that are raised for everlasting contempt, are those that pierced Jesus, those who condemned him, those who mocked, derided him. They all will be raised before the coming of Jesus to see him. There will be the priests that condemn Jesus. Jesus said, you will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud. So, they will be raised before. And when Jesus comes, He will not come alone. He will come with angels. Jesus said that He will send His angels and will gather together all the saints. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 31, He shall send His angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together His elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. This coming of Jesus will be a glorious event because Jesus will come bright and shining and he will come in a threefold glory. In the book uh, uh, Desire of Ages 739 it says Christ will come in his own glory in the glory of his Father and the glory of the holy angels. Threefold glory. His glory, the glory of God and the glory of all angels. Just imagine how bright it will be. The wicked will not be able to stand. And by the brightness of the coming of Christ, they will be annihilated. But about the angels, we read 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands of angels, the beautiful and the triumphant Son of God, possessing surpassing loveliness and glory, will escort him on his way. 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands of angels will escort Jesus and they will have a special mission. They will be sent to all parts of the earth to gather together the elect of God. <coughs> then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations then every eye shall see him, and they also that pierced him. In the place of a crown of thorns, he will wear a crown of glory. The angels will gather together the saints. When Jesus comes, he will not step on this earth. 
at his second coming. Before the coming of Jesus occurs the resurrection foretold by Daniel chapter 12 verse 2. Those who at the coming of Jesus are alive, they are 144,000 in number. When Jesus is coming, those that saints that are alive are 144,000 in number. This is recorded in early writings, page 15. And at that time, God will announce from heaven the day and hour of Jesus' coming. Until that time, nobody knows the day and hour. But then God's voice, after the partial resurrection, will announce the day and hour of Jesus' coming. Then the saints they know and they are awaiting the day and hour of the coming of Jesus because they understood the voice of God. The others who heard the voice of God and thought it was thunder or earthquake, they will not understand. And this will wait and wait, and when they know that the time had come for Jesus to appear, they see a little cloud in the east. In the beginning, black, but as it comes closer and closer to the earth, becomes brighter and larger and glorious, and Jesus is seen sitting on the cloud. He brings in his right hand a trumpet, in his left hand, in his right hand a sickle, in his left hand a trumpet. And the apostle Paul wrote about that trumpet in Second, uh, First Thessalonians chapter four. First Thessalonians chapter 4, we read from verse 15 to 17. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. This word prevent here, is not understood by all. This word prevent here means we do not anticipate or we would not be taken to heaven without them that are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. The Apostle Paul here left out some details which he did not mention to the Thessalonians, but he mentioned to the Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 53 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Uh, to the Thessalonians, Paul did not speak about the change. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Now, this is another detail that Paul did not mention uh, to the Thessalonians, that the, those that died in Christ will rise up first, but will rise incorruptible. And we, 
shall be changed. We, those that are alive, are changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And after they are changed, the two companies, they join together to meet the Lord in the air. In Great Controversy 645, I read this. The living righteous are changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the voice of God, in the beginning of the first plague, of the seventh plague, when God said, it is done, at that voice of God, they were glorified. Those that raised for everlasting life, they raised glorified, but not immortal. And I read, at the voice of God, they were glorified. Now they are made immortal. At the coming of Jesus, they are made immortal. And with the risen saints are caught up to meet their Lord in the air. Here it is. Jesus will not step to this earth. The saints are taken up to meet Jesus in the air. Angels gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Little children are born by holy angels to their mother's arms. Friends long separated by death are united, never more to part. And with songs of gladness ascend together to, city, to the city of God. And the most beautiful description about this ascending to heaven is given in early writings, pages 16 and 17, which I wish to read. We all entered in the cloud together and were seven days ascending to the sea of glass when Jesus brought the crowns and with his own right hand placed them on our heads. Many people assumed from this de description here that before entering heaven, everyone will keep one Sabbath because in seven days there will be one Sabbath and they will keep it holy before entering heaven. That is a, just a deduction that can be made from this reading. He gave us harps of gold and palms of victory. Here on the sea of glass, the 144,000 stood in a perfect square. Some of them had very bright crowns, others not so bright. Some crowns appeared heavy with stars, while others had but few. And you know what these stars represent? Souls that were saved <coughs> through our efforts. All were perfectly satisfied with their crowns. And they were all clothed with a glorious white mantle from their shoulders to their feet. Angels were all about us as we marched over the sea of glass to the gate of the city. Jesus raised his mighty glorious arm, laid hold of the pearly gate, swung it back on its glittering hinges, and said to us, you have washed your robes in my blood, stood stiffly for my truth, enter in. We all marched in and felt that we had a perfect right in the city. The angels will be around us. Not only the angels, a multitude of saved from Adam to the end. There we will meet the guardian angels. 
and they will tell us how many times they delivered us from death. We will meet the inhabitants of other worlds. And the most important, we shall meet Jesus. Jesus, our Savior. And it will be fulfilled the promise of Jesus. Blessed are the pure in heart, because they shall see God. We will have the privilege that Adam had in the beginning, to see God face to face, without a veil of a veil between. Human language cannot describe that glory. That bliss that await the faithful children of God. So what is now our duty? To get ready. May God grant us His mercies that we all may be ready and may be there when Jesus will come to take us home. My wish and prayer. Amen. Amen. Our gracious, merciful Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come before thy throne of grace at the end of this divine service. We thank thee for thy wonderful promises. We thank thee for the plan of salvation and for eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Help us, Lord, that we may make our preparation now and in that day when Jesus will come to take his faithful ones home, we will be among them. Amen. We ask to bless each one of us here with this deep desire and bless those who could not be here for justified reasons. And we ask thy Sabbath blessing upon thy people everywhere in the world, Amen. those who seek the spirit and truth. Be with us as we depart from this place and uh, help us that we may keep the Sabbath hours according to the commandments, Amen. so that we may receive the Sabbath blessings. Amen. We ask thee to forgive us our sins, our mistakes, our shortcomings, and cleanse us in the precious blood of Jesus, and give us thy peace in our hearts as we depart from this place. We ask all his mercies and thank thee in Jesus' dear name. Amen. 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 Now